Welcome to the start of our very special series on the Cross Border Interviews, where we look back on the last 12 months of 2022. And I couldn't have asked for a better person to start off this series than my friend and friend of the show. He's been on four times as of this airing, uh, the leader of the Green Party of Alberta, Mr. Jordan Wilkie. Jordan, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm uh, always honored to talk with you uh, here from Treaty 6 in Edmonton. And uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, what, what are we doing today? We are talking about the last 12 months of 2022 and looking back. So for the next few weeks, few days, few episodes, we are going to be bringing back some of the highs of our year. And yes, that includes Jordan because he was one of our top 10 episodes of 2022 as of recording this episode. So I could not have asked for a better person to start this series off with. And I'm going to hit you with the very first question. It's not, where's your sense of duty to serve come from? It's how was yeah, your 2022? Well, 2022 was a bit of a roller coaster. Um, it's a loaded question. It's probably a loaded question for both of us and for most Albertans, I would have to say. Uh, there's not a lot of people that I've spoken to that just had a chill 2022, you know, just uh, another day in the books. Uh, 22, 2022 was one for the books, I would say. Uh, for me personally, for me personally, it was, it was, it was hard because uh, I was still off and I've been quite public about this. I was still off with uh, PTSD from uh, my job as a first responder. And uh, I was getting help through most of 2022. And I had uh, an incredible therapist that helped me through it and incredible support from uh, the fire rescue service here in Edmonton. And so juggling sort of the political landscape with that. And now th that was very difficult for me, but it was also great because it kind of allowed me to be creative, to uh, not be isolated, to have uh, a team around me. Um, and so, you know, I did keep my head down a little bit more than I probably would have uh, as I worked through some of uh, the issues that I had with uh, PTSD. But for me, it was a huge growing year. Uh, we did so much uh, within the GPA and, you know, now I'm back to work. So everything's kind of come full circle and uh, yeah, I'm really proud of, you know, the support that I've had and, and uh, the, the help from my family and from my loved ones. And, and I couldn't have done it without that support. And now it's time to try to give more support to the people of Alberta that, that need it. And uh, that's kind of, you know, as we approach this election, it's how can we help you know, what can I do to help as a leader? What can we do to help as a, as a party for, for Alberta and for society? So yeah, it's been a big growing year. It's been big, a big year for sure. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to ask an inappropriate question, but I feel like you're open because you just said you have been open about your mental health struggles over the last year with the battle of PTSD you're not alone in that battle. There's a lot of Albertans in this province, and I, I would say even across Canada, who are struggling with post-traumatic stress disorder, with mental health issues. Why is it important for someone like yourself, who is a public figure, to talk openly about this uh, struggle that people are dealing with today? Yeah, that's a great question. And uh, actually, I didn't, I didn't know we were going to go into this, but uh, I didn't either. And you, you, uh, <laughs> I, I hope that's okay. And if you, if not, uh, please. No, it totally go. is. It totally is. And I've been, I have been public about it, but also, you know, I don't want to make uh, mental health my identity. Um, so, and I've seen people go that route where it kind of becomes all encompassing for them. Uh, so having a balance is of course key. Uh as a public figure, speaking out about it is super important to me. And I think that uh, obviously the stigma around mental health needs to end. Um, we need to be talking about it. Uh, men uh, need to be speaking about it. They have a hard time, obviously, and, and many other groups. So uh, as someone that is in sort of a more of an, a, an alpha line of work within firefighting, you know, and, and firefighting culture as a whole, and, uh, uh, you know, in a lot of the cultures uh, that have been sort of toxic and, and, and people have been repressed in the past as far as their ability to speak out, things are shifting. And we have to continue that shift by speaking up to, to the reality of the fact that 
we we do need support and that we do need to reach out to one another and we need to open up these conversations. And so by doing this, I hope, of course, that other people uh, in Alberta and, and around the world and, and people in, in professions, uh, you know, especially uh, that historically told you to kind of get over it, will continue to speak up, will continue to ask for help because when I, you can't get someone to ask for help, they have to do that themselves. But what we can do is uh, continue to speak up ourselves and create uh, the environment where people feel comfortable and safe to make that, that first move. Because once you make that first move, uh, you know, that's where you know, everyone can show up and, and, and help each other out. And so, yeah, at, especially within politics, mental health uh, is public health. Um, universal mental health uh, is something that in the Green Party of Alberta that we feel very strongly about. Uh, we will be that will be part of our our platform uh, for 2023, and we will continue to push uh, against the stigma around uh, mental health and the need for uh, the, the the support that so many Albertans do not get. And uh, I've been very privileged to have support and to have a be working in a in such a great organization that that had a peer support team and allowed me to access the resources that. I needed so many people do not have that opportunity and we need to ensure that uh, that changes we could probably sit down and talk for an hour in itself yeah, on mental health but i want to turn back to our big topic and that is 2022 you have had a busy year you have crisscrossed this province you've been down here in calgary up in edmonton you have been recruiting candidates you have been getting ready for the 2020 20 23 sorry uh provincial election in may of next year i want to ask you another sort of open-ended question but i feel like you have this idea where it's going to go and what's been the highlight of you for 2022 as being leader of the green party of alberta you know i, I don't i'm not sure how to pick that other than the fact that uh, the team around me um, is just incredible. And uh, I just want to, everyone that's sh showing up right now as well to run as a candidate. Uh, I was just thinking today before I got on this interview, just uh, how incredible uh, these people are that I have the privilege to to work with and, and help represent and help guide uh, into this next election. And so watching uh, a lot of young people show up, uh, you know, right now, as far as our candidates are concerned, we have 19 officially, although uh, I don't know if it's the 19th is on the board. We have many people in vetting. Um, we've already approved about 25 candidates and we have to get them into the system. 30% are BIPOC at least. Um, and seeing that representation show up uh, in Alberta politics for me is, is, is huge. And the fact that we had uh, one of the most diverse uh, executive councils, probably in, in uh, provincial Alberta provincial history uh, under my leadership has also been a, a huge highlight for me. And so watching people that have been disenfranchised and, and have been isolated and wanting to give up, you know, and I've been there too, uh, come back and, and see that there's hope and that we can work together for, for something better than uh, the crumbs that uh, these political parties say that, that, that we're entitled to. Um, well, I think we can do better. I think that we can provide uh, better for Albertans. And I think that we can come together and represent the diverse needs of this province. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that there's more young people, more diverse candidates coming forward for the Green Party of Alberta? Because uh, I, I, you and I have chatted numerous times throughout this year, and I can tell you that proportional representation is one of the key factors in your uh, platforms. You talk about mental health in their first part of our uh, interview. You have great candidates here in Calgary, across this province, and they all seem to have different unique viewpoints on how to make Alberta better. Why do you think more people are coming to the Alberta, the Green Party of Alberta? Sorry, I was going to call you the Alberta Greens, but you're no longer that. You're the Green Party of Alberta. We are. We're kind of, you can, you can say either. Um, we're now taking back Alberta Greens um, a lot, like our website now, albertagreens.ca. You can go. Um, and that's, 
we should have another uh, whole podcast just on the history of the switch from Alberta greens to. I would love that, Jordan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll just go for it and then see who gets sued. Um, bring it on. So it's uh, the question answering the question. Yeah, there's an openness. There's definitely an open. Like I could go a million different ways with this answer, but I think I'll just start it because you you juxtapose it to the other parties where there is a huge top-down authoritarian whipped vote, uh, whip messaging, um, and you basically toe the line. And I think we've had this conversation a couple of times where in the Green Party of Alberta and Greens um, across the world, there's no whip. And so we don't tell you how to vote. We don't tell you how to act. We don't want you to be a robot. We don't need you to be a lawyer and a career politician. We want ordinary citizens to stand up for what's right for Alberta and for what's right for their communities. And that is a great focus because we want you to represent. And that's why electoral reform and the need for a proportional representational system unlocks a greater democracy where their voices of the disenfranchised, and not only that, the voices of just diverse groups within this large, large province uh, can be represented in the legislature. And we can work together and we can collaborate. And I just had a recent post that says, if we don't agree, it doesn't mean we're arguing. It doesn't also mean that we're enemies. And parties are branding each other against one another. And the, that fight is great for fundraising because that's all you ever hear. We need to stop this. We need to stop that. We need to stop this. So when we move to an electoral reform system and we move to a proportional representational system, there's actually less need for fundraising. And I don't know if you know this, Alberta, but when you fundraise millions of dollars, for me, that's not a success story. That means you're taking money out of pockets of Albertans because you get a tax rebate. So your tax dollar is now going to people that are donating to political parties. And I don't know if that's the system that we want here. I would say that that system is a waste of money, it is a waste of time, and it is dividing Alberta into groups. And there's so much hate and there's so much anger, and we need to be better and we need to overcome that. So imagine we provide the people of Alberta with another option, that option being electoral reform, that option being a party that doesn't whip votes and tells you that you're with me and you need to toe the line. So when we look at politics and when we look at representation as the ability to pull from your community the views that are needed to be expressed in the legislature, the wants, the needs, the concerns, the dreams of Albertans, if we can come together and talk about those then we'll have a better society. And when you have a system that allows for proportional representation, inequality always goes down because it is more people-centric and it is less about doing favors for the people that fundraised for you, for the people that uh, helped get you into power. And that's the system I think that a lot of the diverse groups in Alberta and the youth uh, want to see because we need to focus back to everyday citizens. And so when everyday citizens become involved, when you're in a, a political system and uh, an electoral system that uh, where every vote matters, then you have a huge influx of people that have said, well, no one's listening. Um, they're showing up to politics and they're getting involved and then they're representing the province and not only just voting, they're, they're uh, exercising their de- democratic right to stand. You, you have been an early advocate in this uh, province for proportional representation. Proportional representation has been making a lot of waves across this country with Quebec, Ontario. And you came out and said, no, let's let's change the way we do that in uh, in Alberta, because it's no longer acceptable that the majority of p- seats in the uh, legislature is represented by 20% of the voters in Ontario or Quebec, or even here in Alberta. Um, as you have been going around with this idea of proportional representation of being a key platform of your key policy for your platform in 2023, has there been discussions of what type of 
proportional representation? Is it mixed member proportional? Because there's a lot of people who might say, okay, I, I like the idea of changing the way we vote, but I want to know how we're going to change it. And I don't want to hitch my wagon in 2023 to a candidate who might be advocating for ranked ballots and over mixed member proportional. So which way are you actually looking at? Another great question. So any proportional representation is better than first past the post. Let me just start <laughs> off there. Okay. Um, because it, always uh, creates a, a, a better representation of the people in the region where they get to represent their values. What type uh, is the conversation that comes up a lot? And it's usually for people that, you, you know, when you said I'm crisscrossing and talking about it, honestly, it's, it's the people that are more involved in politics that want to know that question. Um, but it's a valid question. Really? Um, yeah, I, I think people... I think people understand the need for electoral reform. I, pe I think people understand that other countries are representing uh, their people better and the benefits of that, whether it be less uh, inequality, whether it be environmental protection, whether it be a stronger economy, uh, these things are people that things that, that people can kind of really get uh, when they, when they ask what type um, you know that they've got some background on this already. And so that's an exciting question. So thank you for asking that. Um, so we do have some policy around mixed member proportional, um, but it's, again, our policy is more on participatory democracy. And so the, fur the further we can get to a direct democracy, um, and a lot of people say, oh, people aren't ready for direct democracy yet. Um, you know, we see that happening all across uh, the world with citizens' assemblies uh, becoming uh, more and more used, uh, becoming permanent in some areas. Uh, Paris just has a, ha, uh, just launched a permanent uh, citizens' assembly. And so that's always exciting to see that. Um, so when we ask a question about who picks the type of electoral system, I always like to say, let the people decide, because the best way to look at it is, imagine I won the Stanley Cup, and then people came to me and said, okay, well, you won the Stanley Cup, great. Why don't you decide the rules for next year? And I think that as soon as you, <laughs> you put people in power, they want to protect power, which is why first past the post has been so difficult to move away from in uh, Alberta politics or in any politics. Um, so what I'd like to see is a citizens assembly, uh, that has the top three. Um, usually that's mixed member proportional, uh, a singular transferable vote. Uh, and if you want to geek out on these, which we, we love to do, I always say, go to fair vote Canada, check it out. They will give you all the information you want on all the different types. There's actually some, uh, exciting sort of made in Alberta forms of proportional representation. And I'm, uh, hoping in December to have, uh, a action on electoral reform meeting. Um, maybe I'll do one in Calgary and one in Edmonton and we can bring out, um, I can't remember the gentleman's name that, that designed it, but we'll, we'll bring him out. And I've been talking to fair vote Alberta about, um, working together. Uh, so it's, again, there's like a mainstreaming aspect where we need to ensure that people have the civic literacy around this conversation. Elect the need for electoral reform, the need for going away from a two-party system, people understand that. People say, yeah, okay, great. Let's, let's fight for that. Let's, uh, let's open up democracy uh, again. So uh, Another exciting thing is that, you know, this is something that's not new to Alberta. Alberta had a, a form of proportional representation. And so I'm, I'm always okay with, hey, let's, why don't we go back to the one that we had that was um, eradicated because uh, a party called the Social Credit wanted to ensure that they uh, kept power and uh, proportional representation wasn't good for them because they were losing, I think, a few seats to democracy well, poor them um and and they did a way poor, poor social credit i could never imagine yeah. saying those words in 2022 yeah poor them so um 
they did away with it, of course, because it benefited them, just like Justin Trudeau didn't uh, fulfill his promises of doing away with first past the post because it didn't benefit him or Rachel Notley as she uh, approached her winning year for a majoritarian um, first past the post victory with 40% of the vote. Um, it benefits them and it allows elites and people who have power to hold power. So when people understand that, they understand why this is so, such a hard conversation to get away from. I digress. It'd be cool to just go back, like, let's go back to what we had. So we had um, a singular transferable vote in the main cities. Um, and then we had a, a ranked ballot in, uh, which is not proportional, but it is closer. Uh, we had a ranked ballot in, uh, the rural areas. And so we could start there and we could move on from there. Um, you know, I think that that should be an option. So when we win uh, and we work uh, collaboratively within the legislature to, uh, in, uh, to create a citizens assembly to, to choose uh, what type of proportional representation we need, I think that should be an option. Um, what did we have? What are other countries doing? What are other regions doing? What did uh, BC want to do, um, you know, it, during the referendum, but there is no referendum uh, because referendums allow people to uh, create no campaigns, uh, disinform disinformation to protect the status quo. Uh, and these, I've I've looked a lot at like what referendums do uh, in regards to electoral reform, and it generally creates fear around it. There's no fear to have more democracy. There's no fear to have a better representational vote in a diverse province like Alberta. Basically, the only thing that we can do is benefit from this in many different ways. And that includes the economic uh, benefits of, first, uh, of moving past first past the post, of, of having a proportional system, and all the social and environmental um, and democratic uh, benefits that, that come out of it. So when we launch our, our platform, a large part of it is going to be a little bit of, of, of lit civic literacy around proportional representation. And it'll also show a lot of the benefits that uh, basically allow parties to work together to collaborate for the, the benefit of everyone instead of uh, these hyper-partisan agendas that just get pushed through. True that. Um, I want to turn to uh, another topic and it's more of the year as a whole for the Green Party of Alberta. Yeah. Right. Policy is policy, but growth is always something that you want to do. This is the last year before a general election in 2023. Are you seeing more people starting to come over and start talking about the Green Party of Alberta? Or are you still trying, seeing that struggle of trying to break through this two-party system of, hey, we are another viable option for people to look at? And I, I, mean, I mean this within the mainstream media, on social media. Are you seeing the growth that people are actually saying, okay, let's, let's take a look at Jordan. Let's take a look at the Green Party of Alberta in 2022. I think that there's been a lot of growth. I think that our, our ability to um, to grow on social media and, and to really get back to some of the basics of what we intended to be as a party um, is important. So my leadership was to push us back towards the objectives of the party and that being to get, first of all, uh, people voted in and, and, and become MLAs in the legislature and then also to form government. So I'm working towards both those things. And uh, once you do that, of course, there's a lot of people um, that, you know, were kind of in political parties because they had very specific agendas or they uh, used it like a social club and things like that, especially in the smaller parties. Um, so we had to move away from that. And once we did that, uh, everything kind of became more streamlined and we were able to focus more on the goals instead of, um, you know, pet projects that didn't serve the people of Alberta. And so that's really exciting to come out of that over the last little while. And I mean, I think that was more of a 2020, 2021 thing. Uh, but in 2022, I guess that gave us the legs now to start moving towards uh, the objectives of the party. And once we did that, uh, we had a lot of people show up for the right reasons. And so, you know, I would say uh, growth is, is relative. Uh, you can ask for growth all day long, but if you don't have uh, people showing up for the right reasons and for the right cause and are in line with 
the objectives of the party to to win seats in the legislature, then it, it didn't really matter. Um, that's why I I showed up at less protests, you know, and started working towards uh, candidates and platforms and policies, uh, better representation. Um, we had a lot of uh, meetings with with groups that um, felt disenfranchised from from government and things like that. So it was it was our opportunity to really understand where our niche is and then also move forward there. So by also moving towards electoral reform as the main talking point, because we want to do a lot of things, of course, and it's not the only thing in the platform, um, but it does create a safe space for people to come in and say, look, you have your values. I have my values. This isn't, I'm talking over you. This isn't, my values are more important than your values. And I am here at your door now telling you that what you care about doesn't matter. I'm actually here to say that your your what you care about matters a lot, and that your vote should matter, and that you know we pay the government and we fund this government, and for them to say that your vote doesn't matter uh, is insane. And so, if we can protest what has become of Alberta politics, the strategic vote of the two party system, then I think that what we can do now is is create a really safe space, just to get back to your question, like a really safe space for people to come together and represent the banner of the Green Party. And it's not necessarily what you think it's going to be, right? Because people obviously have pigeonholed us as only environmental and only climate change. Um, but our principles are sixfold. And the sixth principle, well, it's not even the sixth, it could be the first, they're interchangeable. Participatory democracy, everything does start there. And when you don't have a flourishing democracy, People always hurt. The environment always hurts. Our future hurts. And we can now overcome that and we can bring in people in a safe space to go knock on doors and say, here I am. This is what we're for. And have you heard of electoral reform? Do you ever, have you heard of the need for electoral reform? And also, do you know that we can represent you better than the other parties because we don't whip votes and we do um, allow people to vote and represent their communities uh, instead of the hyper agendas of partisan politics. So those are the moving back towards that. It's like, you got to know your room. Like we're in Alberta. So do we want to go out and fight everyone and say that we're in this camp and you're in this camp and you're wrong and what about this and what about that sure that's we can bring awareness to the issues that matter to us but other people have issues that matter more to them in alberta um and so and then there's a lot that we have in common but we can't get to that we can't build that bridge unless we learn to have a new conversation a new communication and, and a new ability to collaborate so I don't know if that answered your question other than the fact that I'm really proud that we're bringing in the people that want to move in that. And it did. In, in, yeah. We want to move in that, in that direction. We don't want to keep fighting. Uh, I think also the greens have, they, they come across, um, I don't know if it's elitist or, but th there's a bit of a, uh, how can I say this? I think that greens can isolate themselves very easily um, by by overstating uh, issues that don't matter to people who are just trying to get past the, like, the next week. And I think we've talked about this before, right? The, the, yep, the, the paycheck Najib, to paycheck. The, yep. the favorite Najib Judd quote of, we can't ask people to worry about the end of the world if they can't, if we can't show that we worry about the end of their week. And so that's a huge shift in green politics. And if we can understand that, and if we can meet people where they're at, Again, we're trying to represent uh, the, the ordinary average Albertans and without doing that and without showing our compassion uh, for everyday needs and issues and, and by, by speaking past that to, uh, you know, the, the flames and the fire and, you know, that's hard because we'll never become uh, the party that we need to be without having people involved in the conversation and there's a lot that needs to go on and there's a lot that needs to happen. And the first step will always be communication and collaboration and accountability. And so like going back to electoral reform and the need for uh, political collaboration is, is going to be our key message for sure. Now, uh, not to 
continue on this converse, this topic a little bit, but I just want to say this, that I have covered politics a lot in my time, and I have never seen a party that is not sitting in a legislature come out with so many candidates at one time, but so far in advance of the next general election. And I say that like, okay, the NDP, the UCP are nominating people, but the Green Party basically said, hey, guys, we don't just have one. We don't just have two. We have 15 candidates who are ready and willing to serve as your next MLA before even, I think it was, I think early if not late October when this was announced or even beginning of November. And I went, holy crap, Jordan and the Green Party have their ducks in a row here. They're not waiting until the last minute, which some parties do, and nominating a few candidates here and there. It's you're coming out and you're coming out full force. Was that important for you as leader in 2022 to show a party that is not only ready, but also willing to fight for the votes at the doorsteps and saying, Hey guys, here's your candidates. We're not just dropping on the, on election day or a month before election day. We're doing it seven months beforehand. Yeah, absolutely. It's just so exciting to, to see people um, so passionate about the, our values and about the six principles and coming in and, and, answering the call right and you know there's so many people that i've i've talked to i think that, the, uh, sorry i'm not trying to interrupt it but i think the biggest win for you was stealing a candidate from another party not stealing but you attracted can you were attracting candidates from other parties to say you know what i don't see myself in this party anymore i see myself more in the green party of alberta that must be a huge win in 2022 for you yeah, I mean, this is the party. It's 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 not me. I'm just I'm doing my best and I'm being authentic, right? I am being authentic. I'm just myself and and I think that everyone is trying to play this role in politics and I think that we're moving past that and I think the younger generations like, you know, for example, Zach coming over from the Liberals. I I'm sure he's just tired of all the games and 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 we just need to get back to basics of wanting to do good, represent and help others. And when you, when you put that message out there, it's amazing to see who shows up. And again, I'm not trying to sell the green party to anyone. It, it's not something like I, I showed up for the right reasons. It, if you show up for the right reasons, then let's all work together and people are showing up and it's really exciting. Uh, I think that this is just going to continue uh, you know, I'm getting a smile right now because <laughs> we're moving towards a full slate and we're hitting the quota. So we're going to have 30 by the end of the month. Um, and I don't know what the UCP are at right now. I think 36. I'm sure a lot of their nominations are coming up. But we'll have 30 by the end of the month and um, we'll be moving towards 87. We're doing a campaign online trying to make democracy more accessible uh, for average Albertans, because uh, I don't know if people know this, and if I had time, I would take it to court, but you have to pay $500 uh, to run, and that's not democratic either, and actually it's um, not constitutional. Uh, I know it's a, it, you get it back if you do all the right things. It's kind of, right, like it's, it's like a, a security deposit. What is that? Which we all know that people who pay security deposits in 2022 get get their security <laughs> deposits back in this day and age. Well, what is that? If you are a hardworking person and you're, like, let's say, you're a student and you you are deep in debt already, I'm sure, uh, which is you know another thing we can talk about. Um, how do you how are you charging five hundred dollars? For, for people. And so, of course, the party's paying for it. And, and a lot of the bigger parties are, are whatever, $500. We raise that in a second. Well, good for you. Um, but when you're just talking to average Albertans that are stepping up for the right reasons, $500 does matter. And so our, um, our party right now is, uh, we're kind of like fundraising $500 at a time uh, to 87. And so go to the website, greenpartyofalberta.ca or albertagreens.ca. And uh, Check Both links will be a, in the show notes. Yeah, if you scroll, thank you. Yeah, if you scroll down, it's making democracy more accessible and feel free to throw in five bucks. Um, so that's it. People powered, right? Um, and we we want to ensure that uh, 
our candidates are well supported and Evelyn Tanaka, our, our president is just doing an incredible job of, of supporting and uh, our vice president, uh, Jonathan Parks, he's incredible. And the deputy leader, Randy Kincaid, all just working so hard for to ensure that when people come and they say, look, I want to be a candidate, that they're getting the support that they need and that they feel like family, they feel like they can reach out, that this is not a big pretentious machine that wants you to row at the same time <laughs> if Everyone, if i've done my due diligence yeah. correctly here and i think i have you just named three guests of the show who all appeared on the cross border interview the day before this episode airs so if i if all my ducks fell in a row correctly yeah, okay. all three jonathan evelyn and brandy will be on the show a day before this episode airs as our last final full interview for the year so Cross my fingers, it actually worked out. <laughs> sure. so nice. Yeah. You just, you just name drop it's, three of the guests, and I was like, I'll throw it in there. Let's see if I let's pull the Oprah method. Say it, and it'll happen. You know what's cool about all these people is that we're all new to politics, right? We're all showing up. Uh, I'm going to keep saying this. We're all showing up for the right reasons, and it's not because we did this in university and then we did an interim or whatever. It's we are here and we're figuring it out despite the roadblocks that democracy has democracy has laid for us. And we're saying these need to be erased and we need to do better. And I think that imagine more everyday citizens being in the legislature, they'd have such a better relationship to the needs and wants of the average people of this province. And so, again, I think that there's, there's a connection here between the fact that we have, you know, now 25 candidates uh, so early and the fact that we are being authentic and that we're standing up for the people and that we're not, we don't care about all the partisan BS that all the other bigger parties are, are, are worried about. We, um, yeah, and it's, it's great. Yeah. Again, shout out to Rob Morin. He's our CFO. He stood up and, and, I don't know what we do without him. Uh, and, and Desmond Bull, Chief Chief Bull of the Louis Bull Tribe here, uh, he's been an incredible advisor. And, and Najib Jutt, uh, also, uh, he's a political pundit and he's my personal advisor. So again, thanks to all these, to this team, right? Because I'm so honored to to be in 2022 with with you guys and, and, and all the help that you've had, that you've given us and and, uh, and all the advice. So it's pretty exciting to to be a green right now. So I'm going to ask the final question here, Jordan, because we are at the end of 2022, but 2023 is around the corner and it is going to be a fun year for any political observer and any political candidate as you are about to enter a political campaign period. So for you, what does 2023 have in store for Jordan Wilkie, but also what does 2023 have in store for the Green Party of Alberta? Well, big win uh, on election day uh, is coming up. And, you know, there's various forms of victory when we look at what is a win. And uh, if we have butts in the legislature, then we are uh, winning. And we actually have the opportunity to, to you know, have the, the balance of power and really create the accountability and the transparency and the collaboration that's needed in Alberta politics. So you got to give these, these other parties a shot. Um, and what we're asking for is full-scale protest against the strategic vote, against the two-party system, full-scale protest. And, and how do you protest it? You use the system against itself to build a new system. And so let's use first past the post. Let's vote in every riding for a green uh, that will ensure and has promised to legislate proportional representation and give Alberta, a new a democratic system that is for the people. And yeah, beyond that, uh, it's just, we're going to have a lot of fun where we've got a big AGM coming up in, uh, I think it's April 1st, April fools. Uh, we're going to go for it. And uh, we've got, we're going to have a big party in Edmonton with uh, a lot of DJs bringing in a lot of the the youth and a lot of artists, uh, speakers, uh, activists, it's going to be really exciting. So, uh, what, what do we have in store? Just we're, we're, we're going all out and, uh, we're ready for, uh, the election I'm going on. I'm taking a personal leave from firefighting 
uh, that starts in April, uh, and that'll allow me to really hit the doors uh, myself and, and, and get out there full time uh, on my own dime. Uh, so yeah, that's how much I care about this and, and how much passion I have uh, to be the volunteer leader and to ensure that uh, Albertans have another option when they go to vote in hopefully May 2023. Um, Jordan, I want to personally take a moment here and say thank you for helping me this year. Um, as a lot of people have known, I've been struggling a lot with cancer and I went through radiation and I've gone through chemo. I'm doing recording these in November because I have a surgery, which is going to take part of my voice away from me. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be coming back in 2023. I hope I am with a little bit less of a uh, high pitched voice and maybe it'll be a little bit of a Walter Cronkite sounding, but um, your dedication to democracy, your dedication to picking up the phone whenever I called you, your dedication to answering my tw tweets and saying, do you want to come back on the show? Because I'd love to have you on, um, has meant the world to me. So Jordan, from the bottom of my heart, uh, thank you so much for making this year such a fantastic show for me and so appreciative of your, our newfound friendship. And I will say that even though, even if you don't agree with that, it is a friendship that I will always try treasure so thank you so much thank you. <laughs> ah dude i'm doing these a lot these this month so there's gonna be a lot of waterworks in this month's show so thank you so much chris we can see your heart we love what you're doing um yeah anything we can do we're here for you and yes we are your friends and we are part of your support network and everyone loves you uh chris so just uh you know, let us know if you need anything and, you know, you call, I pick up, uh, yeah. you know, whenever people are, are coming together for the right reasons, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And so thank you for the show. Uh, thank you for, for all you do. And, uh, yeah, we're always thinking of you and your health and, uh, and whatever we can do, we're here for you. Um, well, but, uh, thank I'm you. excited for 2023 and I'm excited for your, for your new voice and, uh, I'm not, we <laughs> will, we will no. We're we'll we'll get through this. We're gonna yeah. get through this, and and uh, yeah, let's just own it. You know, whatever whatever we're we're both doing. You know, we gotta own it. We have to be authentic, and and this is life, and let's live it. And uh, every day counts. It certainly does. So with that, this has been another edition of the, well, I, I guess not another edition. It's the first edition of 2022 in review on the cross border interviews with Chris Brown. Remember, put down your social media, go have a conversation with somebody helps our society democracy and helps us be better people. So with that, tune in tomorrow for another great edition of the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. Talk to you later.